Welcome to Pen and Brick. Today we're going to be exploring the 20 tools I normally use every day at work when I'm working on the software Rhino. So I'm not going to go through the basics such as using lines, cut, split, explode, some of the tools that you'd maybe face when using AutoCAD, MicroStation, 2D drawing software. What I'll be talking about is exclusively tools that I use, for instance surface tools, that can only be used on 3D modeling software. The surface tool is one of the most basic tools and when you use it with extrude surface you can really create some great forms straight away. These are the variation of them, I'd play around and I'd see which ones can achieve the ones that you'd want. Now another tool that I'd recommend using is the block tool. But now we're just going to press block, give it a name and then we'll leave it on the side for later. Another tool I want to show you guys is the Array, and specifically on this one, the Array Curve. I find the Array Curve really useful and underused, and if you're able to measure your distances correctly, you're able to get really amazing results. You get two options, you can either set by distance or set by number of items. Another tool that's worth mentioning is the Gumball tool that you might not be used to, and you can toggle it from the bottom. Once done, you're able to move with the X, Y, and Z axis quite easily. Now, Array Linear is the brother to Array Curve, and I use this properly about once every 15 minutes. What you're able to do is, as the name supposes, you array the same objects in a linear fashion. Block Edit, if you remember the block tool that I mentioned before, enables you to modify the one block that you've modified. Whatever you do as edits on this block will appear on all the other blocks in your drawing. So for instance here, I'm going to use the Boolean tools to divide, subtract, or add. Now once I press OK, all of the elements are going to follow the single block element I've given it. Hence in a file, you can start working in very little detail and then add the detail progressively. Isolate enables you to just focus on the element Now let's say you want to add some pipework. All you need to do is you need to set the trajectory for your pipe, add the two surfaces where it will end and finish, and by using sweep rail, you're able to create those three forms. I'll delete a few of those. So let's say I want to add a door. One of the issues I might start finding is because when I'm working, I'm working on a single plane, as you can see on the monitor right now. If I wanted to change where that plane is, I would type C plane tool and it would enable me to choose either by surface, by elevation or by shape, where I'd like that C plane to be. Now your C plane is where you start drawing. So imagine the C plane as being your sheet of paper. And as you can see, I'm working vertically now. Let's say I'd like to set the shape and make it into something more three-dimensional. I could use the Revolve tool. The Revolve tool enables you to use the profile to set your shape. Now, if I wanted to extrude it, I could use the same tool, extrude, 
or I can be using what I normally use, and that's the scale tools. The reason I want to use the scale tools is because sometimes you're going to have issues with points moving forwards and back. So scale 1D has the name again, enables you to scale in one dimension. Scale 2D in 2 and scale 3D to scale the whole object uniform. Just resetting my seaplane. Now I'm going to add a quick domed roof. And the move face tool is particularly useful if you're working with spherical objects. And it enables you to push the face outwards from the initial object, hence giving it volume. You can use the lens length to change the same way as you would a camera how wide or how narrow your view can be and it can give you some very unrealistic or realistic views of your space. Then viewport is where you're able to save all the views that you have currently on the screen and if you'd like to go back to them after giving them a name you can by just double clicking. Now one of the most important tools is the Make2D tool. The Make2D tool is quite good at making 2D drawings, line drawings, from whatever you're perceiving on screen. And here we're looking at the Hidden Lines tool, which gives you an X ray view. Now the issue you can have sometimes is the lack of quality and lack of precision. What I'd recommend is that you set your units on how precise you'd like your drawings to be. Now be careful because the more zeros you're going to add to your units, the more it's going to take time to render or produce. As you can see, the lines are a lot cleaner in this version because I've added less time. And finally, your export tools, of course, and that enables you to keep your line drawings or save them as any cap. And there you have it. Hopefully, these 20 tools that I ran for really quickly enable you to start off using Rhino. And now I'm gonna send a small video to give you a teaser of what you're able to do with these very simple tools. Bye.